What's up, cats? Um, this is the second review um, of my little Friday the 13th week I've got going on here. Um, and uh, today, yeah, today we were taking a look at Friday the 13th Part 2. I think you would have heard all of that because I didn't have my thing on mute. But anyway, I apologize. Um, yeah, Friday the 13th Part 2. Um, I really didn't hit on a lot with Friday the 13th um, yesterday when I reviewed it um, because what hasn't been said. And it's the same for all these films uh, a lot of ways. Also, uh, as much as I love Friday the 13th and I, I really put it high up there, um, the next couple of movies you're going to start to see that these are the ones I really enjoy. I guess I really get into Jason's Killer, so I'll probably actually talk about these a little more instead of hitting the highlights. But um, yeah, this one, uh, directed by Steve Miner, who was an associate producer on the last one, um, written by Ron Kurz, who is uncredited technically in the first one as writing that, that scene with um, Ron Milkey, um, Officer Dorf. Um, but he, he wrote this one. Um, and you've got, um, I think, Frank McCuso Jr., who produced this one. I thought he produced the first one, too, but I didn't see anything in the credits thing on IMDb, but I'm sure he did. He's sort of like the, um, uh, what's his name, of Halloween. Uh, he's like the Mustafa Akkad. Sorry, I can't believe I can't, couldn't remember that name, but he's sort of like the Mustafa Akkad of these films. He produced a bunch of them, and probably only for mon <laughs> money reasons, I guess. I don't know if he really gave a damn about them, but whatever. Um, uh, yeah, Harry Manfredini's back doing the score, um, as you're going to see in a lot of these. Um, and that's really quintessential to these movies, his score, and the whole, again, that's something else that I should have mentioned in the last review, and it goes through all of the It's just flukes, man. He just, he, he t like, who would have thought to do that, to take, like, the first two syllables out of kill, killer mommy, like, kill mommy, like, and just put them through a voice box and come up with something like that. Like, it's... <laughs> Really, a lot of things came together for these movies, but um, uh, you've got a pretty great cast, I thought, in this one. Um, Amy Steele, John Fury, um, Stu Cherno. Again, a bunch of people. There's a bunch of people in these movies. Um, uh, also, you had uh, recurring characters with Adrian King, Betsy Palmer, um, Walt Gorney, who unfortunately, actually, yeah, unfortunately, two of them, <laughs> two of the, the three of them, out of the three of them, they all end up dead. <laughs> two of them end up dead in this movie. Um, but yeah, um, this is one of the ones that I remember pretty, like, I remember when I watched this the first time, I was kind of, like, totally thrown off, because I think, like, when I talk, when I, whenever I try to think back to the first Friday film I saw, I think it was Part 5, because I remember not knowing that Part 5 wasn't Jason, because I think it was, like, the first one I saw, and I didn't get the whole ending where it showed the guy's face, I was like, that's what Jason looks like? Didn't know the whole thing behind it, I, I feel to this day that that's probably the first one I saw, but I think there's some competition, because I know this one was one of the early ones I saw. But this is, of course, Friday the 13th Part 2 with um, Jason as the baghead, sackhead, pillowcase head, tater sack Jason, whatever you want to call him. Um, uh, and, uh, like, he, I don't know what it is about this movie, man. This one, to this day, I still find a very creepy factor involved. Um, I think it's because later on when you get into them, Jason turns from being this sort of scary thing that could happen to this totally super, like, this totally, um, I don't know what to call it, this, he's like a zombie, he's like something that really couldn't happen, but in this film he's just a guy in the woods, which I think is going to be how they play with Jason in the remake, well I know it is, uh, from everything I've heard, um, we're going to get to see a sack at Jason before he gets the mask, um, in the remake, um, and it's just, it's sort of the scary thing that there could be a guy in the woods, I think it's because like when I was, when I used to go to camp a lot when I was a kid and things like that, like, our guy was, I don't i don't know why, but like the guy that everyone, like it, it was just like Jason, was old Joe Carter. I, I don't know why, but, and he was supposed to have lived in a, in a like a, a cabin in the woods that was full of all these weapons and stuff like that. So when you're a kid, that was sort of like the ghost story in my camp. And uh, that's what this Jason's like, he's just like that. And so I guess that's maybe that's why, but I've always found part two to be probably the creepiest of the series. Not necessarily my favorite, but always the creepiest. Um... Uh, Jason is played by Steve Dash. Steve Daskowitz is his actual name. It was sort of his stage name at the time. Uh, for most of the movie, when he's got the bag on and the stunts and stuff like that, it's only the end when he's Jason is unmasked that we have Warrant and Gillette into the makeup. Um, but uh, yeah, those are the two actors that played him. And uh, yeah, I don't know. It's funny because this Jason is this is before Jason became like this superhero monster where he couldn't be killed. Um, He's this, uh, he's just sort of a guy. I mean, he runs, um, he gets kicked in the nuts and falls down just like any other guy would. Um, you know, 
he takes a takes a lick in, in some spots, but he's still just a guy. I mean, uh, John Fury ends up fighting with the end. And it's like they're struggling. He's actually like shorter than him. Like, um, he's just a, and he's just like a map man wearing plaid and, <laughs> and uh, you know a pair of overalls and running around with a bag of his head killing people. And it's just I think what makes him sort of I guess um, what lends to the mythos of Jason is because in the first one he's supposed to be a kid that died, drowned in the water. It's just sort of a jumpy scare. Carrie esque um, dream sequence at the end, but they wanted to make a sequel. So they're like, well, let's make it so Jason never died. So, you know, everyone's like, was it him in the water? And did he crawl out of the water after the scare? And then, uh, you know, you know, grow to man size, or has he always been in the woods and that was just a dream? But it's connected somehow. The, the, there's really no reason to try and like connect the stories in these flicks because they don't make any damn sense. But it doesn't have to make sense. It's just the king himself killing teenagers at camp. But yeah, um, like I said, this one, I just to this day, I still find this one creepy. That whole sequence when Amy Steele is running um, from him, and she's she's all alone now, and they cut to the moon. It's totally ripped off of when Adrian King is running from Betsy Palmer in the first one, but they've added a little more to it, and she encounters him a couple of times. I don't know, there's something about that, that whole, it's so dark, and you can't see anything, and she's just running from him, and you know, and then she gets to his cabin, and his cabin, you see it in the day, it's just kind of a joke. You're like, oh, he's got a shitter in there. And, but when you get into it, um, at night, and you get the full reveal, and you see what's actually in there with his mother's head. There's a shrine of his mother's head, and the place becomes infinitely scarier. And the whole situation is just so creepy. And and there's stuff woven into the story here too, like the whole thing with Amy Steele, Ginny, being like a, she's into like child psychology, and that's sort of how she starts to try and understand Jason. Um, and she uses that to her advantage at the end. Like there's some stuff in this, even though you know it's it's not the best made film, under budget, um, you know, some crappy acting. There's some stuff that's actually woven into this that I think makes it sort of a really interesting story and a key part to the series. Something you definitely have to see before you go watch this remake again. I'm going to I'm gonna stress it about the first one for sure, but I think you should watch all four of these if you're going to go watch it and you haven't. Um, these are classic, classic slasher horror films. Um, sort of the progenitors of the whole wilderness craze. And um, yeah, not a whole lot else I can say, I guess, about Friday the 13th Part 2, except get your ass out there if you don't own it. I mean, you can get the box set and get all of them. You can go buy them separately. You can go buy the new deluxe edition. And, you know, actually, I think that one has some pretty good features on it. So, it's, you know, get your hands on it, man. Just go out and get it. Don't care if you rent it. I don't know what you got to do, but you go out, you get your hands on it, and you watch it um, sometime this week. I know I'm going to watch the first four this week before I go see the remake. And I've already seen them a thousand times, so... Yeah, anyway, guys, um, I will come back at you tomorrow, um, Wednesday, um, for a, um, another review of my favorite of the series, Friday the 13th, Part 3. So, yeah, um, I will talk to you then, and uh, take it easy.